Mehdi Hassan is an exceptional interviewer, but now he's left MSNBC. He's finding himself answering questions instead of asking them. He's gone on Piers Morgan and the most interesting exchange concerned Hamas and terrorism. It was an act of terrorism and Hamas are terrorists. That's your position. I think, I think the Hamas fighters who went into Israel and killed civilians and kidnapped babies, certainly I would call them terrorists, right. just as I call Israeli soldiers who kidnap children and kill children terrorists. I use the terrorist label more freely because otherwise it's just a politicized, mm. empty phrase that we just apply to our enemies. What I would say, Piers, is that I find it a problem, and you, you know this, you've joked about all the memes about you, mm. this obsession with what we call Hamas, which is a question you pose Let's be honest, Piers, to most of your pro-Palestinian brown guests, you don't ask your Israeli or Jewish or pro-Israeli guests to condemn Israeli terrorism or Israeli war crimes at the start of an interview in the way you well, do no, I've been asked directly. I've, I've been asked directly whether I think Israel are terrorists, and I've said no. There's an interesting answer from Piers Morgan, because he essentially says, well, the reason I ask pro-Palestinian people if Hamas are terrorists and I don't ask pro-Israeli people if Israel are terrorists is because I don't think Israel are committing terrorism. So sort of... I only, I only dispute people when, when I, I personally disagree with them. It's, it's, I suppose maybe that's a reasonable way to conduct interviews. I, I feel like maybe he should be trying to challenge his own beliefs as well as to challenge um, other people's. And um, of course, you know, Mehdi Hassan also sort of opened up the possibilities there because even if he doesn't think that Israel are terrorists, why doesn't he push those Israelis on war crimes? Right. If you don't want to say, do you condemn this this act of terrorism? Why don't you say, do you condemn this this war crime that Israel have so clearly committed? In any case, um, Mehdi Hassan continues on this argument very effectively. Let's go back to the clip. I don't think they are. I think they had a right to defend themselves. The question is the That's scale. Not, that wasn't that wasn't the point I made, Piers. No, no, that but wasn't no, the point I, I made. I, I said when you have Israeli guests. No, no, hang on. on. I don't let me, no, let me on. finish I my sentence. Answer the question. Let me finish my sentence. No, Mehdi, it's not your show. It's mine. I wanted to say that, or the whole interview, by the way. <laughs> so we got that out of the way. That's a joke. I'm joking. But the, the, the point I would make is, I, I think that I asked all the pro-Palestinian guests who've come on that question quite quickly, because I think it, it reveals a state of mind. If, like you, and I'm sorry, I, I didn't realise you had in that first piece on MSNBC done that. So I, I take back the suggestion you hadn't. And I'm glad that you have that you have called them that. I don't think you can call them anything else. So the moment you have a pro-Palestinian guest who wants to avoid calling what Hamas did an act of terrorism by terrorists, I think it's very revealing about their mindset. And I think it's the wrong mindset. Here's my problem with that. Why is that not applied to your Israeli guests? I would, I would, be, I would be fine, Piers, if you had Palestinian guests and you begin by asking them, do you condemn Hamas war crimes? Mm -hmm. Because what Hamas did on October 7th was a war crime. But then you should start with Israeli guests and pro-Israeli guests saying, do you condemn Israeli war crimes, which have been documented by the UN, every human rights group on the planet. You don't. You had Naftali Bennett, the former Israeli prime minister, on a couple of weeks ago. I watched the interview. Your opening question was, how comfortable are you with the way Israel's prosecuting the war? Right. Bit of a softball to start with. You didn't ask him to condemn Israeli terrorism, Israeli war crimes, Israeli genocide in Gaza. So a lot of people look at that and they say, I, they get your intention, mm. but it comes across as a bit of a racist double standard. So smooth. So smooth, so in control, always very effective when you've got the receipts as well. He's looked at an interview he's done two weeks earlier with Naftali Bennett. It says, you asked a much more soft question than you, you do when you're talking to a pro-Palestinian, usually a pro-Palestinian brown guest, right? That's how you can bring in that racist double standard charge. Let's look at our final clip of that exchange. Um, they're talking here about why Piers Morgan doesn't think Israel are terrorists. People do ask me, do you think Israel are terrorists? And I've said, no, I don't think they are. But I have repeated... Why? Well, I have repeated... Why? Because I think they... Out of interest, why? Because they were responding to an act of terrorism so heinous, it demanded a massive military response. The question for me that's caused me a moral quandary is what is an acceptably proportionate level of response? And I don't know the answer. But I don't think you can call people responding to an act of terror on that scale terrorists for responding. What you can do is hold them to account. The problem, say, the problem if, Piers, if is breaking... if you go to Gaza, if you go to Gaza, Piers, and you talk to Palestinians, they will say that Hamas were responding. If we play the who started it game, we go back many decades. Well, when, did Israel, is when did Israel kill... Uh, over, what we need to have is... Well, hang on. When did Israel to, kill 1,200 Palestinians? When did Israel kill hundreds of Palestinian civilians? When did they kill 800 Palestinian civilians in one few-hour period 
right, in the way that Hamas killed but those Israelis. But that's not Israelis. the definition of terrorism, how many hours you do it in. I can mention many Israeli massacres going back to Sabra and Shatila, which they oversaw, going back to Kibia and Ariel Sharon, going back to Deir Yassin, where rape and violence happened. The point is not to compare atrocities. The point, Piers, is to have a consistent moral principle, which is to say, if you kill civilians for a political cause, mm. you are a terrorist. On that basis, Hamas have committed acts of terror and Israel have committed acts of terror. I think that's only fair to say that. Yeah, listen, you're perfectly entitled to say it. That was such a cop-out. Piers Morgan like, just moves on after that. You're perfectly entitled to say that. Yeah, but is he right? He's obviously right, right? You're perfectly entitled to say that. It's such a sort of way of, okay, back off, right? He was right. Is it, the idea that you can possibly say it's not terrorism if they were provoked is just the most, which is Piers Morgan's argument, right? It's, it's the most transparently juvenile, flawed argument if you're going to try and call anyone anywhere a terrorist, right? Pretty much every act of violence is provoked to some extent, right? People don't normally just sort of commit random acts of violence for, for no reason whatsoever. So if you're saying a provocation means it can't be terrorism, then you definitely cannot say that October the 7th was terrorism, right? Because, you know, you can say a lot of things about October the 7th, but it didn't come in a vacuum. It came after decades of illegal occupation. Um, so I think Mehdi Hassan very much won that. I'm torn about Pierce. I think on on the one hand, it's remarkable that he's having these conversations on his show. Um, you know, you and I spoke about this a few months ago that the, the Israeli gamble of this protracted conflict was that people would stop paying attention, that it would go the way of the Ukraine war, where the public interest uh, would fade, which would create more space for them to operate with greater impunity. Uh, and I think that there's some evidence that uh, much of the Western media is complicit in that game of, you know, uh, reducing the pressure of taking the boil down uh, on uh, accountability or at least visibility uh, of Israel's assault on Gaza. And I think it's remarkable that, that Piers Morgan, as someone who we could have expected to basically just stop talking about the issue, um, is having these conversations. At the same time, that conversation, I mean, could have happened. It's like something that could have happened five years ago. You know, we're looking in the context of an actual genocide and an imminent invasion that has been, you know, already condemned by Israel's strongest allies, in which an international court of justice has ruled that anyone's complicity in the violation of its uh, provisional measures, uh, such as supplying arms for the slaughter of Palestinians, is a uh, violation of international law. Why are we? having these debates about, you know, who is and isn't a terrorist, rather than having a debate around how we can basically apply those standards, norms, and laws that supposedly unite all sides of, of this conflict. So I think that there's uh, a double risk here. The first risk is the one in which the violence, horrendous violence, kind of disappears from view. The other is that we talk about the issue, but in such facile uh, terms that don't reflect the gravity of a situation that don't reflect the consequences of some of the more um, imminent uh, actions or daily actions to cleanse, perhaps annex this territory. I think that that's a, a secondary risk uh, that we need to be cautious about. Um, but yeah, always, always good to see peers get thrown in the trash can.